then the confidence that you build brings out strong leaders. Therefore, it has unique identity. What if I told you that there is a school in East Africa that adopted the Scottish culture for almost a hundred years now? Yes, welcome to Nyakasura School. It is a school that is located in Uganda and until today, people are still in shock because of its culture. Well, what surprises everyone in this country about the school is how they wear. Everyone is used to a boy or a man wearing a pair of trousers, but this is not the case in this school. They wear what everyone in the neighborhood refers to as skirts. These are well known for women and girls, but not for boys. The students of this school do not and never want to hear anyone saying that because they claim that what they wear are not skirts. It is a kind of dressing that has been on earth for centuries now. Unlike everyone else, they really love it. In the first place, why did they choose to wear like this or be different from anyone else in their country? This is their story. Everything started many years ago. Africa was still under colonization by some of the countries that are overseas. They used to come to Africa and teach people new beliefs, morals, and new ways of living, and so on. Uganda is one of the countries that was colonized by them. It was colonized by the British, but a few colonialists also came to conquer some parts of this country, Uganda. Yes. Uh, this school, this Nyakasura school's uniform has a great history. But the history is linked to Scotland. Among those, there came a Scottish missionary known as Commander Scotsman Ernest Ebhard Corwell. This is not the region that he came to first. He was in the Buganda Kingdom that is quite a distance from where this school is located. Colwell wanted to establish the Scottish culture in Buganda Kingdom, but the king refused him to. And why he left to here, it was a disagreement between the, the king of Uganda and the Calwell. Calwell wanted to introduce this kind of uniform people, which people call skirts. But they are not skirts. They are called kilts. Yes, kilts. The missionary was later invited to this region where he founded this school. It was in 1926, which means that the school is 96 years old now. The, the, the founder, the, the, the founder of the school, uh, called in Lieutenant Ernest William Eberhold Carwell, uh, um, was a Scottish missionary. From then, this school has had more than thousands of students who have had their education in this school. He showed him three places at that time. He showed him this place called Nyakasura. Nyakasura means salt, salt like, yes, salt like. There is a, a river stream, there is a river stream just down there, which has, which tastes salty. He is the current principal of the Nyakasura school. He says that Nyakasura means salt. This is called a salt-like area because it is surrounded by water streams that seem to be very salty, and this is where the name Nyakasura came from. The principal describes this kind of attire as a kilt, a garment resembling a knee-length skirt traditionally worn by men as part of the Scottish Highland dress, and now it is also worn by women and girls. It is common mostly in Scotland. This kind of garment that people recognize as a kilt today was invented in the 1720s by Thomas Rawlinson. So now one could imagine how long it has been worn and people are getting to know it as days go by. 
anyone would be so curious to know if the school administration doesn't mistake boys for girls because what they wear is almost the same. We are all wondering the life of these children in this school and how they feel about this. Luckily enough, we talk to some of them in order to find out. Well, normally when I talk about my uniform and when they see students putting on a kilt, most of the times they say we are dressed like girls, but for me I have no problem with it because I've lived with this kilt for four years, so I have no problem with it. Now I'm comfortable with it. Though other guys say that it's not a good thing, it's, it's beshaming to see a boy putting on a skirt, like a skirt. But it's not a scout. For me, I'm okay with it. I have no problem with it. According to what they say, in the first place, when they had just joined the school, it was very hard for them to live with this easily. But as time went by, yes, they did. They kept on being taught about the history of this school, and now they are proud of it. She says that to her, it was weird when she first saw it. It seemed funny, but with time, she eventually got to understand it, and now every student considers a kilt as a normal attire, and nothing is funny anymore. No, even the men are also comfortable, because this is a school setting, and so the uniform is that, and then the boys also like it. If they don't like it, then they would have complained, but yeah, they love it. They, they, that's the love for the school, yeah, the school was founded, and then they gave it a kilt as the uniform, so they have to obey that, they have to love it. The boys wear a red cloth on their legs, which is known as the leg warmers. This is also part of the kilt. That is called a leg warmer, not cut. It is not cut, it is a design. It's called a leg warmer. Because Nakasura is cold, and therefore you have to cover the upper part of the leg. And then the socks are inside the shoes. The socks are inside the shoes. They call them sporans. These are made of animal skin and this is what they use as pockets to keep some materials like pens and more of that sort. Well, it looks kind of complicated to someone that is wearing a trouser, but as time goes by, one adopts it. He says that this is the only school in Uganda and probably Africa too that wears kilts as their school uniform. They love it because it is something that the majority and the outside world is not used to at all and it makes them unique. Many of the people outside have a misconception about their school uniform. These students want to clarify and make it clear that these are kilts and not skirts. It is something that they should understand and stop laughing at them. Ever since the school started, when commander came, the commander was, was coming from Scotland, so that was the culture he brought in this school. He brought the kilt, and in, in their place, in their homeland, in, in, in Scotland, it's, the, it's a very normal thing for a man to put on a kilt, which looks like a skirt. So even here, it's, it's imposed on us. It's a very normal thing. It's like we're in Scotland here. So Uganda, in particular, Port Porto, Nyakasura School is Scotland and we are very comfortable. Some of the teachers say that it was never easy for a student who just joined this school to feel comfortable while wearing a kilt for their first time. And some of their parents do not also get it at first, but later they understand. He says that this school has now become international because of being unique. They are now receiving awards, gifts, and sometimes grants, which make them so proud, and now they have a dream of making this school as big and good as it can be. In Uganda, this is the only school which dresses like us. And uh, we have some students who come here from international areas, come here like Kenya, like uh, Rwanda, some students from Rwanda here. Uh, some two years we had a student from Congo and uh, Southern Sudan and Tanzania. Now they started receiving students from the neighboring countries like South Sudan, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo and these people travel thousands of miles to come to the southwestern part of Uganda to Nyakasura School. The school has been involved in many sports activities and it has been winning a lot of medals and trophies from different competitions around the world. This is also one of the reasons that makes them proud as a successful institution. 
the Ministry of Education of Uganda also recognizes this school as one of the best excelling schools in their region. A good example of being unique and thanking them for sticking and maintaining the culture that was started with this school until today. Yeah, the, the, the Kild itself is a unique thing in Africa for us. Uh, first of all, we've given its history, the heritage, uh, heritage I was connecting it to history, how we started uh, appreciating and then standing out, standing out, we, we saw exception. This uniform is so exceptional and makes us stand out of the crowd. Well, it is not only classroom education because they also learn a lot of different things which include rearing domestic animals like hens. They also carry out farming since this is what is mostly practiced in this area. Besides kilts, they also have their local African traditional clothes and they wear them to keep their home culture alive too. Though the students and the people in this school are very proud of the way they are living, some of the people outside still refer to this as colonialism. Some of the citizens say that adopting a culture of a foreign country is good, but one should never forget the culture of their homeland. This is where we had traveled today, the southwestern part of Uganda, to visit this unique school, and it was a very beautiful day that we spent with these lovely students, and we hope to come and visit them again someday. Being different can actually be advantageous if you learn to embrace it not to mention the fact that it will spice up your life. It highlights your originality and authenticity. It makes you stand out in the world full of conformity. Thank you for watching. My name is Prince. This is a Fromax English. Do not forget to subscribe.